Good morning all. Cordless LED work light, 20 volts from Lidl. Uh, bought this a couple of days ago. It was £7.99. And it's the first really of Parkside's incursion into the completely unnecessary work light uh, market. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I say unnecessary, but that's probably because I've got uh, countless Ryobi 18 volt work lights uh, and buying work more work lights is really unnecessary but anyway this uh, I mean incredibly cheap some of those Ryobi ones were uh, expensive 70 pounds or something like that seven pounds 99 uh, the only other light I've got that fits the 20 volt batteries or 18 volt as they probably should be called um, is this one which is a sort of battery topper it also has USB outputs. Oh, I wonder if that's got a USB output. Probably not. Um, and uh, an LED there. But this one might possibly be a bit more powerful. I don't know. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get it out of its box and uh, see what you get for your £7.99. Oh, it's right there. No unnecessary packaging. Yes, it's just the light and this manual. And... There's some safety information in here, but not an unnecessarily overwhelming amount. So, not a bad manual. So, what does this do? Well, we've got a click on, click off switch underneath a, a red piece of rubber. That oh, that's oh, that's got a very nice action. Yeah, that um, pivots up by slightly more than 90 degrees. Let's call it 100 degrees. And there is, if I can get it out. Oh yes, a ball joint hook on the top so you can hang it and that moves oh no it fouls there oh well there we are not a perfect design but uh, if you don't need the hook you can angle this right up marvelous let's go and get a battery is the camera intelligent enough to see down into that led yeah kind of so it's a big sort of dome yellow led thing in there Let's get that battery and here are some uh, stuff on the label 20 volt which is U, uh, one LED 3 watts 280 lumens IP20 is that the um, sort of waterproof rating perhaps it's not very waterproof grizzly tools I do like grizzly tools right battery how's the uh, level that's fine stick that on there on off okay no fancy features just on and off nice circular light pattern central hot spot kind of it's pretty good actually it's got a little bit of um yellowing at the edges but that's not a bad light actually i'm going to compare it with the um the battery topper light let's see what they look like side by side i'll give this light every chance of competing um by putting it on the four amp hour battery how do you switch the thing on? I can't remember. There it is. Oh, it's a much broader spread light. Not very bright at all, really. Yeah, so the cordless work light is a lot brighter than that simple LED there. That's probably one watt. This is three watts. This handle feels like it's getting warm right there. Not up at the LED. I'm sure that's getting warm as well, but right there. So what do we think? Um, constant current circuit or just a whopping great resistor? Place your bets now. Let's take it apart. Okay, here we go. Oh, why won't that come apart? Have I missed a screw? I don't think so. Oh no, there's actually a little clip there. Look at that. Fantastic. Oh, we have a capacitor in there. An electrolytic capacitor. Now, how am I going to get this head out? I'll be back. Oh, my saviour. Look at that. A little... <laughs> PCB with all sorts of, um, well, a constant current circuit on it, not just a whopping great resistor, uh, even though this actually does seem to get quite warm. Right, this board isn't going to come out easily. Um, bottom edge of the board there is a 78L05, I think that says. Up near the square inductor, top left of the PCB. There's a PT4115. Now I seem to remember that that is a purpose-made LED driver chip.
but then there's another chip there which um eight pin chip towards the back of the board oh i read the part number and i've forgotten it now one second um yes that chip is a cm 9m 041b i hold out absolutely zero hope that i'll get data on that but i'll have a look do you see the uh, four pads just in front of that chip i mean normally seeing four pads like that would make you think microcontroller and those are the programming uh, connections sort of data clock positive and ground why would you need a microcontroller in here there's no thermistor so there's no over temperature thing i've checked the manual there's no uh, timeout so i have absolutely no idea why you would need a microcontroller <laughs> In a device that just regulates power down from the battery coming in here and then has a purpose made LED driver, the PT4115. Why would you need a microcontroller? I just don't get it. That uh, lovely action is afforded by this uh, ratchety gear thing here and this nicely spring loaded uh, hard plastic pip here nicely sprung that's what gives the head such a lovely action so the red wire coming from the battery connector goes through the switch and onto the board the black wire the far connector on the battery connector goes onto the board but there's also this yellow wire and it does go to the back of the board where there's a three pin device back there and this possible microcontroller i can't remember what that terminal of the battery is let's take a look oh nothing on here other than positive and negative uh, i'm gonna have to take this apart well it's this connection here next to the negative so it's positive something something negative the only marking i can see on here is p minus which is this one so i don't really know what this one is why would the torch need a third wire to the battery it's a mystery so somebody asked me to take a look at this. Um, I think the question's, question was in regard of changing the LED. Could that be done? And uh, yes, I mean, if you look at the data sheet for the PT4115, you can probably find where the current limit setting uh, resistor is, and you could change that to send a different amount of current to the lamp. Uh, of course, you've got to uh, be mindful of these cables, although they should take an amp or so. Um, so yes, you could do some modifications to this. In fact, let's take a quick look at the PT4115 data sheet. And while my printer is printing, I've managed to get this board out, so we'll have a closer look at it. Uh, so there is what I assume is the microcontroller, PT4115. There's an inductor. That's in the PT4115 data sheet. So is the uh, diode here. And then there's a current programming resistor which might be this R100. I think it may well be actually. Let's look at that data sheet. So here's your LED, three watts, inductor, 68 microhenries. I think that was 100, wasn't it? 101, yeah. Uh, there's your resistor, 0.13 in this application note. But uh, the normal average output current in the LED is determined by the value of the external current sense resistor, RS. Given by the equation, I out equals uh, 0.1 divided by RS. Now, if you dim, if you use the dim pin, then you will get a lower current. In fact, it says that the uh, equation is valid when dim is floating or applied with a voltage higher than 2.5 volts. Actually, RS sets the maximum average current, which can be adjusted to a less one, a lesser one, by dimming. So yeah, hoik that resistor off, uh, replace it with a different one to get a different current, change your LED, fill your boots. I don't know why you'd want to. I think it'd be a nightmare trying to get in there and actually change the LED. For $7.99, you're getting a 3-watt LED that runs off a 20-volt battery. Isn't that good enough? So there we are. All I've got to do now is route these wires through these guides where they were originally. They do look like they got crushed, so maybe they weren't there originally and put the two case halves back together. So there we are, Parkside cordless work light, uh, a three watt lamp 
astonishingly good value 7.99 runs off a 20 volt battery what more could you ask for cheerio